to present a special award, I'd like to introduce a man who spent quite a few years listening to people's troubles as a bar owner and is now set to spend quite a few years listening to people's troubles as a doctor. He's a very good listener, but that doesn't keep him out of his own trouble, which is usually the really funny part. The star of Cheers and now Becker, Mr. Ted Danson. Ted. The first TV show I ever saw, ever, was the Dick Van Dyke show. We didn't... This is true, because we didn't have a TV when I was growing up in Arizona. I think my mother was afraid that it might make me shallow. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, I bought my first TV when I was a freshman at Stanford University. I plugged it in, and on came the Dick Van Dyke show. The show was in reruns, and I would get up at five minutes before 11 and watch it every morning. That's um, basically all I remember of Stanford. <laughs> Dick's brand of physical humor had everything to do with me wanting to be an actor. So it was one of my great joys in life that I had the opportunity to work with him. Dick came to Becker and played my father on the show. He was as gracious and as elegant as you would want your hero to be. Thank you for that. The Dick Van Dyke Show has reached legendary status, not just in my household, but worldwide. Let's look at some of the reasons why. I love that ottoman. The Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. The Dick Van Dyke show is timeless and classic because the humor still holds up. Hey, Richie, I love this. Oh, no BB guns. Laura's against guns. Okay, I'll take it. I'll use it on my boyfriend, Herman. <laughs> Casey gets fresh? No, Casey doesn't. <laughs> well, if you know Dick Van Dyke, you know that he is one of the most affable, likable, naturally funny men that's probably ever lived. That affability is what I think sets that show apart. I can't picture you as a blonde, honey. No, wait a minute. Yes, I can. You know who you look like? Who? Harpo Marx. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore suddenly brought a new dimension to a sitcom housewife. She stood up for things. She had opinions. She would fall apart. Oh, Rob, all these years we said we'd never lie to each other. And I lied to you. What? Sex <laughs> female? You couldn't have lied to me. That's a show of it told the truth in a stylized manner, and it was performed by people who were masters. They really epitomized what great ensemble acting can be. They were just damn funny. Honey, are you upset because I opened your mail? Well, all I'm trying to say is that I would like the fun of opening my own mail and knowing what's in it first. Here's another huge fan of Dick Van Dyke show, the Emmy-nominated actor and star of the upcoming feature film, The Whole Ten Yards, Matthew Perry. Oh, I can never get enough of hearing that theme song. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Ted Danson for being an incredible inspiration to me and also for stealing everything I was about to say about Dick Van Dyke. It's actually appropriate, though, because I've been accused my entire professional career of stealing from Mr. Dick Van Dyke. That, of course, is not true. My entire career I've stolen from Mary Tyler Moore. Dick and Mary took an unusual route to comedy. They were both trained dancers, so in addition to their acting chemistry, they brought a graceful physicality to their performing. Combine that with the shrewd vaudeville timing of Rosemarie and Maury Amsterdam and the nervous energy of Carl Reiner, 
and you get what made the Dick Van Dyke show such an explosion of talent. But there's no easier way to kill a joke than trying to explain it, so we're going to stop now and just say to Dick, Mary, Carl, Rosemary, and Larry, and everybody involved with the Dick Van Dyke show, congratulations and thank you. You are a TV land legend. Now, come on up here and be humble. so great. I've loved this entire evening. It's like a family reunion. I've, uh, all the familiar faces from... Uh, I'm so proud to be a member of this generation. It's, been, it's a great generation. I don't think it's going to happen again, really. And everybody looks real good. <laughs> you know, it is so wonderful to look back on all those sweet experiences we had together. But what is even better is knowing that we knew at the time what a break we had. We were in some kind of a creative Shangri-La where nobody ever made any mistakes, had nothing to do with the outside world. And it's all because of the genius of one man. We all, uh, Carl Reiner so much, it's just incalculable. <laughs> that Mary got taller and I got shorter. It, look, look how tall. I went like that. But look at the heels. That's what it is. Well, I could have brought heels. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Listen, I'm just so thrilled to get this award, and I, I'm sorry that Ed Asner and Valerie Harper and Cloris Leachman aren't here with me. I was a young girl when this show started tonight. <laughs> in my entire life been so thrilled or so honored first of all to with these people you have no idea you have no idea what goes on in television we were a family they were very very close to me we went through an awful lot and the most important person in my life is missing tonight Maury Amsterdam and I love you all and I thank you very, very much. This is for you, Maury. This is for Maury Amsterdam. Uh, my name's Richie, in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> the person I'd like to thank most is right behind me, and that's Carl Reiner for uh, giving a five-year-old kid a chance to get out of Burbank and do something different and be a part of a great uh, history and be here tonight. Thank you so much, Carl, and thank you, everybody. stood up. I thought this is the weirdest show I've ever been involved in. A really strange, wonderful show. It's an amalgamum. It's the Twilight Zone show. Anyway, I want to thank Larry Jones and the TV Land people for knowing something, that the people up here who are going to get awards are not as young as they used to be, and these are the lightest <laughs> awards that are About a, a, a couple of months ago, everybody's asked me through the years, don't you think it would be a nice idea to do a revival, you know, of the Dick Van Dyke show? <laughs> yes, I, I, right. And, and we've done a couple of retrospectives and biographies. And the other day, I sat down at my computer. Yes, I got a computer. And, <laughs> and I started to tickle away. And I started to write. And if these guys will accept it, and Larry Jones, you have the first crack at it, otherwise we go to the networks. George Shapiro will, will handle it. 
but I'm going to write a half-hour situation comedy using only the live members of the cast. <laughs> what they would be doing, the Petries and, and Sally Rogers and this fellow, what they would be doing today. And I've got about four pages done. If I get another, it used to be 46 pages. Now, uh, now it's a 20-minute show you're doing for a half hour. So I can probably knock it off in 30 pages. Anyway, I'm doing that. Do I have a commitment for you that if it's good, you'll do it if the price is right? You guys. They didn't hear what I said. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I thank you so much for... What? We'll do it for nothing. For nothing. Remember that. For nothing. <laughs> you made us... <laughs> anyway, this is... I, as I said before, you're all aware... And look at the lady with that hair. It is a weird evening. Look, stand up, would you please? So they know who I'm talking about. That's weird hair. No, Dick. I want to just want... I always wanted to say that the, uh, the words to the theme song we sang at the beginning of the show were written by the sweet and late Maury Amsterdam. By the way, that was done in four-part harmony, right? Right. Now, could you do it with your part, I, just to hear the lyrics clearly? One, well, uh, right now. I think I forget. So you think that you got trouble, well, trouble's a bubble, so tell old Mr. Trouble to get lost. Why not hold your head up high and stop crying, start trying, and don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. When you find the joy of living is loving and giving, you'll be there when the winning dice are tossed. A smile is just a frown that's turned upside down, so smile and that frown will get lost. And don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> and then I fall back. You know, I just have to say, I always thought that if I behaved like Dick Van Dyke, I'd attract a girl as cool and as hot as Mary Tyler Moore, and I did. Amy, get them colored lights going. I'm coming home. <laughs>